what is diversity, and how does diversity play a role in our daily life, our work, and our lobby and advocacy activities. Everybody is human, but everybody is also different. This is called diversity. After labeling ourselves as human, we can classify people in all kind of diverse groups. We can classify people for example according to their culture, subculture, gender, ethnicity, profession, or nationality. We can refine each group right down until we reach the individual. This is diversity. In addition, we also frame others as belonging to groups. In some cases, we label other people in this way. In essence, labeling and framing is natural and human, and labeling helps us to make sense of the world. To do so is only human. However, labeling can become problematic if we attach prejudices to certain labels. For example, pregnant women are weak, politicians are lazy. Therefore, it is always important that we reflect on the way we label others, and to understand and challenge the way others label us, to establish whether or not we agree or if there are prejudices involved. You can thus ask yourself, how do you label others, and are there prejudices involved? Diversity can also be seen in abilities people have. Disability means, the impairment somebody has, times the barriers someone faces. Persons with disabilities include those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairments, which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. This means that disability has both a medical, the impairment, and social, the barriers, part. Therefore, disability should be viewed neither as purely medical nor as purely social. A balanced approach is needed, giving appropriate weight to the different aspects of disability. People with disabilities face different barriers. It is useful to understand the different types of barriers people face. Attitudinal barriers, these barriers include prejudice, discrimination and stigmatization. Physical barriers, physical barriers are the barriers that prevent people with a physical disability from participating fully in society. For example, there are no ramps for wheelchair access. Communication barriers, communication issues that prevent persons with disabilities from full and active participation. Some examples include, lack of or inadequate signage to guide people who are blind, deaf, or have intellectual impairments, or, lack of information in different formats such as braille large fonts and sign language. Institutional barriers, the failure to make provisions for persons with different types of disabilities in national or organizational plans, policies, legal frameworks, data collection, strategic plans etc. These barriers can be the cause of exclusion of people with disabilities, and it is important to understand and address them, so you can ask yourself, why is inclusion important? Firstly, the goal of disability inclusion is to ensure everyone has equal access to basic services, such as education and health care, and that everyone can actively participate in society. Secondly, disability inclusion is a human right issue, because people living with disabilities have the right to be viewed and treated as equal members of their community.